leading us national lecture with all of you. And I want to thank you all for coming. I am Ann Bircher. You voted for me. <laughs> I didn't have anything to do with it. I'm just here now and plugging along and learning. Man, I'm learning a lot. I learned a lot. Um, but what I want to do is this, through this forum, and I don't know, we can call it something else. This is an opportunity for you uh, and me to get together and just share ideas and um, success stories, answer questions, ask questions, uh, just share a bunch of information. And so I thought I'd break this first one up into kind of like four parts. So I want to be able to have you uh, get your questions answered about any of the contests or any of the current programs that are on the National Lectures website page. Um, I want you to share with me uh, how your lectures program confirmations work or configurations work, because I know each state is a little bit different and they include different things as part of their lectures programs. And I'd like to kind of get a better handle on how complicated it is in some states versus others. Um, I would like to chat a little bit about our Rural Minds Partnership. And I also have a couple of action steps to give you at the end end of this because I would like this not to be another meeting that you come to and then you leave and you don't, nothing happens. Um, I have attended many of those through my career and it's a little disappointing. So I'd like to make sure that this is worthwhile for you to be here and uh, worthwhile for me that I have actually something more to do to assist you in, in your your jobs and as, as as lecturers. And of course this isn't oh, this isn't just lectures. I'm hoping we have other uh, other people attending, whether they're community service people or legislative or presidents or anybody. I mean, anybody is welcome to the, come to this. So the first thing I want to know is... Um, and my question, actually, and oh, I think you, you kind of answered this um, in the last quarter's worth. Mm -hmm. The Weather Watcher Challenge. I've had some people ask me questions. Can they just start whenever they feel like? Mm -hmm. Can they jump in and do 30 days here and there when they remember? What's mm -hmm. the... What's the mm -hmm. aim on that challenge? That is correct. That is all correct. It's just a challenge. It's not a contest. There's not a beginning or an end. But my purpose for doing this, and I think I wrote about this, was to make people just more aware about the weather and its climate and the, and the, and the effects of climate change. Um, when we, you know, I think about our farmers and they're watching the weather all the time. And they might even have some sort of a second sense about what's coming and what's what could be transpiring. But the weather, weather impacts our farming community so much. And all we have to do if we live in the city is just watch the weather report at the end of the day. And then we all badmouth the weather people because they got it wrong. But if you start looking at weather and watching it and actually paying attention to what our weather uh, professionals are doing, to try to make these proper pre predictions. It's pretty, pretty intense. And I, and actually this is a challenge that I personally have taken seriously because I've also just been one that just, well, I'll just watch the weather. I never paid a whole lot of attention to the extended forecast out 10 days because here in Minnesota, and like in a lot of states, the weather will change about every 10 minutes. And so I always kind of laugh when they say in 10 days from now, the weather, it's going to rain at 10 o'clock in the morning on Thursday, it's going to start raining. Um, that never happens. But it, it is quite an, an interesting and scientific process that they all go through to come up with these weather reports. And so I, because I got involved with this challenge myself, now uh, get on the National Weather Service website frequently. I uh, am on several uh, weather blogs that are done by our local uh, weather people here in this in in the, in the metropolitan area of, of Minneapolis. Um, I have um, uh, our uh, Minnesota Public Radio uh, here in Minneapolis also has a weather blog uh, called Updraft, and they just celebrated their tenth year of this of this uh, weather weather blog and they had people on they were just chatting about how the much the weather has changed over in the left not well I shouldn't say weather has changed how much climate has changed because climate is very different than weather and my hope my whole goal with this challenge is just to get everybody a little bit more aware about weather and climate learn something and create a program for your grange and challenge each other to kind of keep track of what's going on in the weather and the climate in your community and in your state. So it was just a way to get 
uh, kind of get the wheels turning to create some new and different kinds of programs that doesn't involve a contest, but involves an opportunity to create some kind of nice program content that's relevant to you and your community, your state, and uh, we can go from there. I mean, there's tons of climate change things that I can share with you as well, but I just, I kind of wanted to just start small with just sort of this challenge. So yeah, you can start anytime. I already got one back, they did it for a week and sent it in to me. Um, I've got two months down myself. Um, and I mean, we've had pretty weird weather here in Minnesota. I think a lot of you've had a lot of interesting things happening in your states. January in Minnesota was the warmest it's been in the last, I mean, it's the, like the fifth warmest winter. No, the warmest January, the warmest January on record. February turned out to be the in the top five wettest with the most precipitation. And getting rain in February is unheard of. And we've had rain a couple of times. So it's a different, it's different here than it's ever been. So, but I'm learning a lot and it's kind of fascinating. So that's why I did that. Okay. Any other, any other questions about the contests or the programs? Yeah, and I had a, um, just a comment. Um, one of our folks saw that program come out and she's a quilter and she immediately said oh I've seen these um, quilts and these like cross stitches where people will put a stitch in or a square in for each day representing each day and yes sure it is or whatever and I gone on Etsy and or somewhere Pinterest whatever uh -huh. well I looked at them because I had no idea what she was talking about but um, I was like oh that's pretty cool she's like maybe we could do that as a group and I don't think we as a group would do that, but I just thought because there's so many crafty folks, that might also be something that could just be a a thing. Um, so it's like, was it an embroidery or was it a? It was a cross stitch. Well, one was a cross stitch and another one was like embroidered. They made little flowers that were different colors. And uh, there's all kinds of stuff. Go on Pinterest. Um, uh -huh. And I'll you do it as, as, a, as a solo person or as a group? She was talking about us doing it as a group and like doing squares. Hmm. Um, but I, I don't know. I, it was just a neat thing that I thought, oh, wow, you could like say to people, represent the, the weather of your area for the year using some kind of craft project, whether it's- Oh, that's fun. Paper mache or- I know Tom cross stitches or yes, he does quilt or whatever. Oh, okay. That's cool. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. I love that. Yeah. And you could even get the kids involved because they could do like a, just uh -huh. a kid paper. Uh -huh. color. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I love that. I love that. Okay. Anybody else have questions, concerns, comments? Okay, then I will tell you, I've been getting questions about the quilt block contest. And so I just want to quick show you a couple of things here. The block that's in the, on the website um, looks like this. I have, so the bottom corner half is dark and the top corner half is light with a kind of dark middle. That's what it's supposed to look like. I have, Another example I can show you, right? Now the top is dark and the bottom is right, or the bottom left is right. Everybody's got that? These are teeny tiny little blocks. Here's another one that came in. This is really pretty. This is one that came, it's all got bees in it. These are little teeny tiny blocks and in there, I, I, you only need to make one, but I am requesting four. And of course, the reason for that is because when you put the four of them together, you'll get a really nice pattern. When you start putting them together, it does some interesting things. So um, I've had some questions about this. And so now I'm thinking, Phil, 
I want to do a video on how you actually construct these and then do some puzzle arrangements of what happens when we start putting them together. You're going to need to edit this thing for me, okay? <laughs> I was like, and where do I come in on this? That's <laughs> Okay, will that be all right? Yeah, I can do that for you. I thought you might be able to. Okay, okay. Um, also to remind you that I am also the keeper of the Quilts of Valor labels. And if anybody in your group needs Quilts of Valor labels that include the Quilts of Valor and the National Grange logos on them, we're a partner with the Quilts of Valor and I have that to me here. You just need to contact me and I will send that off to you. So that's another thing. Uh, photo contest, I think that's pretty self uh, um, evident. Uh, last year, I had the winners made into photo cards. I still have about 20 sets of photo cards left. If anybody wants a set, uh, I, they're on sale now for $15. Um, uh, so just let me know if you want any. And then my question to you is, do you think that's a reasonable uh, result of the photo contest or should we do something different? Would you prefer to see a calendar of the winners? Uh, would you prefer to not have anything at all and just let the winners get their ribbons and their money and that be the end of it? Um, I would appreciate your thoughts on that. Um, maybe you can do a short little video promoting it um, on um, the Grange or the National Grange website of the winners. Well, we tried to do that. I know we had a, we were having a uh, we tried to do a um, what did we do? Oh, we okay. were supposed to try to have a. Um, stream of all the all the participants that didn't happen all of the winners were posted on our post on the uh, national grange website they are there they're just it's right they are yeah. there yeah they're there yeah um i did have a request for a calendar okay Somebody messaged me after session and said they like the cards they'd like a calendar and i said okay i'll pass it along i did like the the um the cards i thought they were really cool mm -hmm. i would love if we could do something with like uh where you can choose what product you want to put it on because there were one or two that i was like oh these would make beautiful coasters oh. you know things like that where i could just select and order um and there are some sites out there that let you do that um excuse me i have a question you said um give them the ribbons and money is this at the little local um uh, mini fairs that we should be doing money and ribbons too no you do whatever you want this is just the national grange contest the photo contest where they out they got ribbons and they got um cash prize but no you in your own states your own uh, local green just you get to make up your own rules about things like that <laughs> i mean i know my own subordinate grange rarely gives out ribbons because they just can't afford to buy them they just don't they don't do that do they give a cash amount then or oh, maybe a dollar or two mm -hmm. most of our most of my grange members participate for the competition not for the prize so that's just kind of a fun participation ribbons then. <laughs> Actually, once we had, our ribbons were just pieces of fabric, red, blue, and oh, just white, white or whatever. Yeah, just pieces of ribbon. So we're, we're a creative bunch here in Minnesota. <laughs> so. All right, well. Um, you can always contact me if you have more, if you have questions, you think of something later, please email me. It's lecture at nationalgrange.org. So there's no reason for you not to, to, to email me. Um, so now I'm curious about how your granges organize or what the responsibility is of you lectures in your, in your subordinate granges or in your state. What's your level? I mean, how many, like how many different hats are you wearing? Are you just worrying about your, uh, 15, 20 minute program during a meeting or are you um, are you a larger in scope than that in some of your in some of your granges? I'm just curious how this all everybody seems to be a little different. Don't all talk at once. Um, okay, I can go. Okay, so, thank you, Judy. 
<laughs> um, I actually am um, the family's activity coordinator in um, the, my Riverton Grange. And then I am associate member for the Granby Grange where I am the lecturer, the family activities coordinator um, and the youth coordinator. Well, you have lots of hats then. So do, you, do, hats. Your, do your activities then sort of overlap? So then you're able to utilize activities from one area to another? Yes. I'm guessing, uh -huh. that's, I'm guessing yes. that's the case. Mm -hmm. I do. Yes. And we, you know, we do this, sometimes we do the same lecture um, at the same, you know, at the different, you know, with the same programs, you know, so um, it just depends on what the different themes are of what we're doing, but that's I'd be very efficient, very efficient, Judy. Good for you. Congratulations. Yeah. You get stars <laughs> today. Absolutely. <laughs> stars. So, and Ju yes. Judy is actually a fairly new Granger also. And, um, you know, I'm the president of my Grange, and that's where Judy first joined, and we never had family memberships. And so my okay. family and Judy's family are the first two family members of our Riverton Grange. And then when we heard our neighboring Grange was turning in their charter, we said, you can't. And so we went over and recruited 29 new members. And so Judy said that she would be the lecturer for that Grange, which was uh, a real phenomenal thing to happen. So she's just been- um, Is that Royal, Royal, Royalton, Royal Grange? What's the Granby name? Grange. Granby That's Grange. Grandy. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Granby Grange number five. Yeah. Okay. And uh, um, which is the home of our first Connecticut State Grange master. And oh. um, and there's a lot of history stored in that former town hall, one room schoolhouse, Grange Hall. And so so, anyways, um, but Judy's been been great, um, a great find, as I like to say, and um, and we're working on a number of initiatives together. But from a state perspective, um, where I'm the Connecticut state lecturer, and we talk um, from the Northeast, um, we talk fairly frequently through our Northeast Lecturers right. Association, and uh, um, which is nice. We have Zoom calls and stuff. And um, but in Connecticut, we have um, our um, different programs that we offer, you know, our, our photo contest and and our complete program, which is putting on like a lecturer's program and stuff. And um, and then based on the level of activities, you can get the state lecturers um, appreciation or the honor um, award. And this year for the honors award, you saw we had the gold coin made up and they they got the gold coin and they got the um, a gift card for right. their for their yeah. grange so um, we do try to push some things um, down from the state level if we can um, right now your third bucket which I'm glad you're going to talk about which is rural mines which yeah. is something we're going to be working on um, we have what we call the lecturers roundup for those right. that don't know our next one is on March 12th at 7 p.m. Eastern and our special guests this time Anne's been a special guest we've had other special guests but our next one is going to be on mental health and rural minds mm -hmm. is going to um, be on there talking about how we can promote how to fill gaps in mental health services at um, the um, subordinate community Grange level. We also try to promote the um, um, community um, citizen award program. And we've also been trying to promote more veterans programs throughout the state, um, working with our American Legion um, organization. So how many subordinate granges do you have in Connecticut? Um, 30, 34. 34. And we have three Pomonas now. Okay. Okay. Thanks. And yeah, I no, try. I no, try to get out and visit when I can. The various granges, because like um, two of our granges were just reorganized. Wallingford just took in um, um, twenty-eight new members, and so they're 
um, lecturer reached out to me and said, I don't have a clue what I'm doing. And I said, why don't I come visit? And so I went oh, down there and I was just blown away. And I'm glad Betsy's here. I want her to hear this. The enthusiasm that was in that room that on April 1st, they're getting their hall back and they are just literally bouncing. We, we were meeting in a food pantry and they were bouncing off the wall. I've never seen such energized people. One of them was the local, um, we call it Board of Selectmen in Connecticut. They were a local um, board of selectmen person and but just really energized people that basically had the same attitude people in Granby had you cannot let this Grange turn their charter in and so they basically advertised on social media and people just started coming forward you know my grandparents were Grangers, really? parents yeah. and it's just it's it's really refreshing to see that happening but I, I think it's important and we try to let the lecturers know some of the people that have been in their jobs for a while, they feel like they're they're there on their own. And we're trying to let them, you're not on your own. You know, you can share programs, content. You know, Judy talked about, you know, trying to share stuff between two of the Granges, but we can do that. Mm -hmm. So there's well, that's there's kind of what of I'm hoping this group can do is share stuff between uh these granges across our across the country. So that's kind of the, the hope that I have with this kind of format here. Little. Anybody in Oregon have anything you want to add or Washington? We've heard from the East Coast, East Eastern part of the country. What about out in out West? Anybody have anything you want to share about your programs or how things are kind of organized? Grange I, I can talk about the suicide, farmer suicide. That actually was our, um, for Klickitat County, it was our fair um, theme for our booth. And, um, and I've helped with the farmer programs of having lecture, a lecture from WSU is our, our university that's our extension. And so we have um, joined with other groups to um, to help each other have a better program, I guess. And um, they've invited me to go for um, a weekend workshop where um, to talk about farm stress. And, and I, I, I've invited the FFA program in to because um, one of the, the students is giving a speech on suicide. And so I've had her come and to our conservation. We were serving the meal for the conservation group. And I had the FFA student come and speak to the conservation group. Great. So, um, That's super. Yeah. So partnering with some other organizations or inviting them in with their uh, expertise is a fabulous idea. Fabulous idea. Anyone else have anything you want to share? Hi, uh, yeah, this is, this is Susie from Oregon. Susie, yes, okay. And I was just going to say our agriculture, we have 11 directors, ag community, uh, membership, etc. cetera. Um, but our agriculture director liked the garden one and she is converted it into a state program as well. So we our state convention meets in June. So people will bring their thing to our convention in June, and then we can encourage them to send them on to national. Yay, thank you, thank you. Again, another reason I wanted to start up this gardening uh, program, this gardening contest was, um, to get people to think just on the tiny, tiny, small scale. Our farmers have to think on such a humongous scale every year. Uh, and we maybe just take that for granted, the amount of planning that goes on for these hundreds of acres of farmland. Um, and I just thought by creating our own little, trying, trying something in our own small spaces and sharing that with one another would be kind of a good exercise and, and, and empathy about all the things you need to plan for and deal with as you work through your garden throughout the summer months. And no matter how, no matter the size. So thank you so much for sharing, Susie. I really appreciate that. I'm excited to see how that turns out. Yay. Thank you. Hey, Dan. Right, um, Ellen, your turn. Uh, I'm Ellen, and I am from Marble Valley Grange in Vermont. And um, I am the lecturer. I am also the membership committee. I am also the ag committee. I also manage our community garden. Um, I don't know, there's probably, oh, I'm also the family activities director. I also um, help my daughter is Jessica Falter. Um, and she's the um, superintendent of the Grange building at our state fair. 
So I always end up helping with that too. And I did the weather thing also. I just didn't get my act together to send it in yet. But I you know I, you know you can wait. Then there's yeah. no rush. You got you um, got still there's a um, lot of time left. <laughs> I hike a lot and I also am um, pretty experienced at I wouldn't really say farming as much as organic gardening, like a lot. Um, That's good. And um, one of the things about the weather thing that I really liked that you put on the end was, you know, are you noticing what the birds are doing and whatever? And because I hike like two to five miles every day and I'm into it, I notice the things like that. Like when does the ice break on the river? Um, a mm -hmm. lot of things are done by the temperature of the soil. So like when does sugar in start, which is a big deal around here. It happens during our fifth season, which is mud season. Um, but like when I hike, I notice like if I'm walking through mud, how far am I going down? Like if I'm only going down an inch and then it's hard, it means the frost only came out of the top into the soil. And there's a lot of things like that that you start to notice. Um, I would really encourage people, especially if they're um, older than I am, and I'm 66, to, you know, get out and really move, you know, get out, hike, do whatever. I just got back from Mexico for two weeks. I went there by myself. So I got to, you know, check out that. Their weather was a lot nicer than it is in Vermont. But um, you had asked about what we lecture about. So yes, we do all wear different hats mm -hmm. and rings. Um, we have brought in probably five or six, five or six new range members in the last year. Um, and a lot of them, you know, not relatives or anything, just people we met at the store or whatever in the craft section. Um, and uh, I found I don't, I like to keep our meetings down to two hours and we do have the gift of gab. So usually I will base my lecture on how much we did in the meeting, how many new issues came up, how many bills, we, you know, whatever. Um, so if the meeting is running over, I will adjust my lecture. Sure. Um, I found that a lot of the people for what kind of lectures they like the best. Cause I do a lot of them. I do a lot of them, like I'll do a big informational thing on, um, oh, invasive plants and animals is a really big deal. Like in Florida, they got, you know, Burmese pythons all over the place. And what happens is um, they drive, they drive out the regular animals or, you know, like we have bamboo and now we don't have the regular, you know, our native plants anymore. So I've done lectures on things like that, kind of current topics, but I don't do any politics, no religion, no sex, because it's just too divisive in America now to talk about anything like that. Um, so I've done a lot of really heavy informational ones like that, or I've done like fun ones where, you know, we play a stupid game or like a memory game. But the ones that everybody in our brain seems to like the best are the teaching ones where mm -hmm. um, I seem to know how to do a lot of stuff, especially craft stuff. I guess I've lived a long time. So like last range meeting, we had how to crochet. And it, cause People had said, you know, some people were interested in learning. We have a few people that know how to do it. So it's like, okay, you're in charge of helping, you know, and and we just sat down with each person and showed them actually how to, to do it and got them started on, you know, maybe like a, you know, a pot holder that I'm going to pressure them until they enter it in state fair because that's what we do. Sure. Um, so this time we're painting um, it's it's really simple. You get the canvas and then you just paint like a squiggling up um, that kind of looks like a tree. And then you take different colored buttons and glue them onto it for the leaves and things. It's really pretty. But we've done a lot of things like that, Christmas ornaments. Um, most of the things here I, I already own, so it's not a big expense for us. Um, so they like, you know, that's what I generally do is something informational that is one topic. Like we used to have where the lecture did a lecture about it. 
and then a game about it, and then a craft about it, and before you knew it, you know, it was the middle of the night, and you were still at the Queen's meeting, so um, I try to do it a little more succinct than that, I guess. Well, that sounds like a lot, and you do wear a lot of hats, so thank you for sharing that. That was really um, helpful. Thank you. Um, anyone else have anything to add? I see Carrie Bleisengame noted that um, her mom created kits for making cool blocks. That's not you? Who did? Oh, Ann Johnson's mom made the quilt kits. Okay. Marilyn did all of the cutting and all you have to do is sew it together. Excellent. Are you doing that as a individuals or are you doing it in a meeting or somewhere? Uh, we've been doing it at our nifty needles nights. We meet on the first and uh, oh, sure. third Tuesday for nifty needles. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay, cool. Thanks. All right. Well, moving on then. Um, I do want to chat quickly about our Rural Minds Partnership. And again, there's another piece of, of literature. This is, I'm not sure where you can find this. I'm assuming it's on the website somewhere. We picked this up at National, or is this on the Rural Minds website? That is also, you can, it, it takes a little bit of doing to get to the world, uh, Rural Minds website off of the National Grange website. But if you just go to ruralminds.org, there it all is. And um, um, the big thing with this is that, you know, the, the, Grange, the National Grange has partnered now with this organization. And the, the whole point of it is, is to really help break down uh, the stigma of mental health. And so I have been perusing a number of different websites. And one of the first things I did here in Minnesota was just go to the State Department of Health. And if you... Uh, uh, search or Google up suicide prevention in your state, you probably your state department of health is going to come up. Uh, and then I also started um, just Google, Googling um, the QPR training, um, which is, um, gosh, what does that stand for again? Question. Um, Persuade, refer. And refer. And so um, it's free training. Um, you can also, many places you can do a free training online, many places uh, you can actually physically go to a training. Uh, another thing you can do is invite a trainer to come to a group. Uh, there's probably a small fee uh, regarding that, but I would encourage everyone to do that and do it in your Granges because um, it's just like learning how to do CPR or learning how to do basic first aid. It just, it's a tool that you can use because when someone is in a mental health crisis, uh, Sometimes it's extremely subtle. And the thing that you want to be able to do is to recognize that it's happening and have a few steps that you can do to make sure you get them to contact 988. Uh, and one of the most important things, of course, is just to stay with them and make sure you get them into a safe place. Um, but not, I mean, the whole point is not so much that, oh, now we're all going to become experts and we're going to go sa start saving a lot of people. The, that it begins with getting people comfortable with this whole idea. And being able to have this conversation with one another about this is something that we really need to be concerned about and be aware of and start to make mental illness another, an easier conversation as another disease. I mean, no disease is pleasant. Cancer is not pleasant. Diabetes isn't pleasant. Um, mental health issues are not pleasant. But to make it a more part of a normal conversation where now we begin to recognize that there are some signs and things that you can actually take some action and help someone with. So I want to encourage you to really take this back to your granges and really consider how you can bring in a professional to talk about this if you're not comfortable doing it. And I don't think I would be comfortable doing it in front of my uh, grange either. Uh, but there's a lot of resources here in Minnesota. Uh, then all of the, you know, we got the University of Minnesota has a fabulous bunch of clinics that we can bring in. Of course, Minnesota has Hazelden, uh, Betty Ford Clinic, which also, you know, that's another thing we've got to deal with the, the substance abuse issue. A lot of people are overdosing on substances. Is it suicide? Well, in a way. Um, but that's another thing I also want to bring up is make sure that your Grange halls are all, um, they all have Narcan, and then you've got people trained in the use of Narcan in your Grange halls. 
we had a Narcan training at our national st state session or national Grange session um, in Nevada that we had over 70 people in attendance at that Narcan training. Um, it's not difficult to do. You just need to know what to do and you need to have that resource available to you. So I think all of your Grange halls should have uh, Narcan, they should have AEDs and basic first aid kits in there. So that's my charge to you to, <laughs> um, to look into that. But go to the Rural Minds website, oodles and oodles of information there. You can kind of pick and choose where you wanna start. But the most important thing that I would like you all to do is to be sure to start. And I know like, uh, like Dave was saying in Connecticut, um, uh, your next roundup is gonna have someone coming. I'm going to try to get on that, uh, your, your roundup Zoom. That sounds pretty interesting to me, too. Um, uh, I Yeah, I believe, um, Claudine, you commented on it, too. Um, you, you had people come and, and talk to you. So I want to encourage everyone to try to invite someone, even if it's from just a local clinic that has knowledge of the QPR system, just your uh, pro program, to come and talk to your Grange members about it. Um, does anybody else have any other anything else you want to share about rural mines that you're that you've uh, experienced? This is uh, Joe Mitzak. I'm the uh, president of Pioneer Grange Number One in New Jersey. Yeah. And, uh, April meeting, we we're having uh, our awareness program, and we we're having a veteran. I don't know if it's in this order. It's a veteran, a first aider, and a police officer are going to be doing a program for us. And we're setting up a panel for people to uh, talk about um, mental health. And we received uh, funding from our state to put this program on. I believe um, it was like $500 or something like that to fund this program. They're giving it to us. Our Grange is uh, number one. So it's the first Grange in New Jersey. And it recently uh, came back. We've uh, had about 20 new members in the last year and they pulled me out of a another grange to bring this back and had this grange has wasn't meeting for years and we brought it back now it's becoming an active part of the community it has a lot of history uh the owners of elsie the elsie the cow were members of this grange and also uh the schwarzkopf family were also members of this grange and this is where norman schwarzkopf played as a young child uh before he became general and his family and funny thing is with all of our families we're still in the area from years years uh -huh. past nice to see the community come back to this grange hall so i'm really really uh glad to see this thing uh turned around in a matter of six months and went from uh looking like an abandoned building to uh becoming a hub of the community now again we have country line dancing now and, and different events and girl scout cookie Athons, and it's really been amazing. And the only thing I can say about it is just uh, make sure you use your Grange when it's supposed to be. I found bringing all of the uh, the items out and running a Grange meeting from top to bottom, along with songs, and and just doing what it's supposed to be. A Grange is supposed to be a Grange. If you want to go to a Masonic Hall, you go to a Masonic Hall. If you want to go to a mm -hmm. Odd Fellows uh, Hall, or you want to go to a Knights of Pythias Temple, you go to those places. If you want to be a Granger, you go to a Grange Hall and I firmly believe in running a Grange like it's supposed to be run, like the organization was founded and we're celebrating our 150th uh, year. Awesome. Thank you. Congratulations, Joe. Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing that. That's great. So bring in some other people and get, yeah, get some funding from other organizations. If you've got the space to hold this, get some funding from someone else to help fund uh, your speakers or activities. Great idea. Anyone else? So, Anne, just a little bit more about mental health and Connecticut. Yeah. Um, so after I um, was at the national convention in Reno and met Jeff Winton, who is the founder of Rural Minds, just so impressed. Um, mm -hmm. We had had a terrible police ambush here in my neck of Connecticut and by a young disturbed man and um, killed two police officers and wounded a third. And we were trying to figure out what 
we could do. And as some of you know, I wear many different hats in the community. And so we actually established a Lions Club branch. It's called the Connecticut 988 Lions Club branch. And we've recruited a psychologist and a nurse and a pre-med student and two high school students. And so there's eight plus people right now working on this. So one of the first things we wanted to do was mental health awareness and outreach. So we did our first event and um, we touched over 300 people at the event, spreading the 988 message. And, um, and two of this club are going to take QPR training. It's $495 a person for the training to be a trainer. To be a trainer. And, um, so um, we're going to um, get a grant for two of them to take the training. They actually met this morning at 10 a.m. to approve submitting the grant for two, um, two people to do the training. And then they're also going to be doing some programs at high schools because with the pandemic and everything, that's been another big concern. So we thought because Loretta wants us all to be golden granges in action. Um, and all you have to do is add a mental health program through once throughout the year, during the year. And you not only be a grange in action, but a golden grange in action. So I'm trying to get all my granges in Connecticut to try to do something. And one of the things they could do is have this Lions Club branch come and do a program and offer some QPR training to them. But one of the important things, and Judy, you actually brought it up on our 988 call today, um, the prevalence of suicide in the farming community. It's the one of the top 10, in the top 10 occupations of people that commit suicide. And I was surprised to learn, I didn't know veterinarians was the top occupation. And, um, but we were chatting about how this really so clearly ties in with our mission at Grange. And so we're trying to spread it not only at the subordinate, but the Pomona and throughout the state of Connecticut. Yeah, that's great. <clears throat> yeah, I saw that. No, with that, the event that you were at, there were several other organizations at that event, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, it was like a convention. And um, so they had tabletop displays. So we got these big three foot nine, eight, eight balloons. So it, everybody saw our table it just stuck out. And then we went to some mental health organizations and we told them what we were doing. So they gave us free handout swag, like squish balls and things sure. like that. What was the, what was the big event? That you were was at the um, state of Connecticut Lions Convention. Oh, okay, 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 great. And we've done an article, I think, Phil, that you have now in your hands, and um, they're going to do an article on the one-year anniversary of our relationship in Good Day. Um, on um, one example of something that has resulted um, from this great partnership that we're having and, you know, uh, just an example of what you could do. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, so being able to utilize other avenues where you can get your message out is a great idea too. That's great. And one of the lions I recruited to Granby Grange. <laughs> that's right. I saw that too. I saw that too. All right, well, we're getting down to the uh, last couple, last 10 minutes or so here today. And so I wanted to just make sure I got you some action steps. This is where I'm giving you a little bit of homework um, because um, I want to know, first of all, how you think this format works. Um, if you think this is a useful uh, use of your time, um, if you have additional questions about anything that we covered, or maybe you have questions about something that we didn't cover and you didn't want to bring it up here. I completely understand. Um, uh, this is not the most um, friendly uh, atmosphere if you are a, 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 an introvert. Um, you'd prefer to put your comments in the chat or prefer to just send them to me. That's great. I, I'm with you all 100%. Um, but just let me know if you think this is a good format, if this is a useful uh, thing and if there are other kinds of things that you would like to cover and let me know that um i also though am requiring each and every one of you and i have all of your names and i know who you are and where you are 
Um, so um, I want you to send me an email with a program that either you or someone you know has done and give me the details. Um, so it could be time and place, you know, the topic, obviously, and just, you know, what your goal was and what your success story was about it. And it, there, it wasn't a success, wasn't a success story. You can also share that because we learn a lot, not only from our successes, but we learn probably more from our failures because then we really know what to do the next time. So don't, don't hesitate to say, well, we really wanted to try this and it didn't work that well. So what did we do wrong? And maybe we, as a group, we can figure that out. Um, um, so if you could give me as many details as possible on a particular program that you've done that was really successful or not so successful, one you might want to try that you haven't tried even would also be on, on the table. But I'd really like to know what you have done and how it has worked out for you with as many details as you can. Um, and you know, then if you think of anything else that you want to include uh, about this particular meeting, I would certainly, certainly appreciate that. Um, so are there any other comments, questions? Um, you're such a quiet bunch, come on. <laughs> and can I throw out just one suggestion? Sure, absolutely. Um, our Grange was founded in 1908, and we have a 99-year-old member that's quite active. And for the first time that we can remember in the history, we actually have two Eagle Scout candidates doing Eagle Scout projects at our Grange. It's a great source of, of getting people to do things. And one is building a collection box for used, tattered, and torn American flags for our mm -hmm. semi-annual flag retirement. And the other one's going to be doing a new walkway from our new handicap accessible ramp to get people safely to the asphalt. And so they're designing it and, you know, having dirt and gravel brought in and they're going to landscape it. But it was really kind of interesting here. I was an Eagle Scout. I never thought. And our first selectman, which is like a mayor in some cities, we call it first selectman in Connecticut. He's now sending me when he gets approached by Eagle Scout candidates that want a project. And so I said, I got a whole laundry list of projects to do. So it's something you ought to think about with Scouts in your area. And of course, Scouts are both second now they're boys and girls so that want to be eagle scouts and um but uh, um it's just a great source of project stuff and our grange is interested in working with the younger people that's great super anybody else have any other comments ideas oh another thing i mean i just call this a lectures forum for the first meeting, if you have any other ideas for a better name, that would be, that's also welcome. And maybe, maybe we should make that a contest. We need a contest for a name for this meeting. <laughs> you need a prize? I can give you a prize. <laughs> the prize is a free pack of uh, the greeting card. No, the photo <laughs> cards. <laughs> um, I will say one pro. So I'm lecturer in my local Grange. Mm -hmm. uh, and one program that I'm actually working on right now is I've been emailing back and forth with um, a police officer um, from our local state, our local barracks from the state police um, to come present a workshop or presentation or something on um, internet safety and online scamming and all that kind of stuff. I know we've seen a rise in that. We've been taken in ourselves. Um, it's not hard to get taken in by that kind of stuff. So to I'm working with them to put together a program for actually our next meeting um, on ways to keep yourself safe online. Um, I know with an aging membership, it's important to show them what sh they should and should not be doing. Um, mm -hmm. I got a Facebook message today from somebody that I know very well, but it was clearly, I can recognize it as a scam because they would never send me that kind of message, mm -hmm. but other people might click on that link and that's what gets you. Um, so working with them to kind of put together that kind of programming, because my favorite lecturers programs are ones that I don't have to do much work for. Right. right. But that's the other thing, you know, there's so much talent. Well, there's a lot of talent and, and experience in this group, but we all know people 
that have a lot of talent and expertise that would be more than happy to come and, and chat with our groups and, and share their knowledge and expertise on, on, on various topics. And, you know, you give them a free snack, give them some food, they're pretty happy to come and show up. And, and Everybody loves some chips after they love them. <laughs> Um, so, and I will say, I know for here in Pennsylvania, we consider all of our meetings open meetings. Mm -hmm. um, so anybody's welcome to come. And it, but in other states, it's not necessarily the case. Um, right. So putting together this kind of event far enough in advance and making it a community event to say, stay safe from scammers, blah, 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 whatever. Yes. Uh, would be a great way to get new people in your door as well. Yes. Well, that's what kind of our community service is about. It's serving our community, not just our own group. So that's a good reminder. Thanks, Phil. Yeah. Anyone else have any anything? So, hey, Am I, I hate to take another thing, but I just wanted to mention I'm serving on the National Policy Committee for Hemp and Cannabis, uh -huh. and um, and we are going to be doing education to try to educate people. And we are planning to be at the regional conferences and um, our national president has invited us to um, present to the um, state president's um, round table. Um, and it is also something that you might wanna think about just to educate people the importance of um, to farmers of the um, really complexity of the rules and regulations and but Sam from um, the Hawaii's first chapter is um, on the call we have some folks from California Colorado um, Pennsylvania Connecticut and some really interesting on the first two meetings um, we've had but we think it's really important because you know, like one thing I learned, we all sit on hemp if we drive a BMW. The seats, the cloth seats of BMWs are made out of hemp. Who knew? And um, I don't have a BMW, but um, I'm just saying. But, you know, some some really interesting things we've learned. And I asked to join this committee because when we were recruiting to rebuild Granby Grange, it's the number one question I was asked from people, what is the Grange's policy on hemp and cannabis? And I didn't have a good answer at the time, and um, but I've gotten a lot smarter on it. But I think a lot of it has to do with education and people's not knowledge on this topic. So we're hoping to push this topic down to the mm -hmm. states in this, uh, the subordinate granges. So if people have an interest in, we actually have a new hemp farmer. We have 34 farms in Granby, and we have a new hemp farmer that just opened. And and um, started up. And so it's really interesting. And of course, I think it's 28 states now have recreational mm -hmm. marijuana versus medical marijuana versus the federal government says it's illegal. And so it's an interesting topic that I think we're trying to, to look at. And in Reno, they passed a resolution setting up this committee to relook right, right. at what we should do. And at least let's educate people on the topic. Perfect. Absolutely. Well, and speaking of uh, policy, and of course, policy comes from all of the resolutions that we all send in. If anybody has any kind of program on how to write resolutions, send me that information. I'd really be curious about how you how that's been form formatted and formulated so that you can teach a group of people how to actually work together to write out some really great resolutions, because I think we need a little work on that. <laughs> yeah, it's very hard. I wrote two this year. So. Yeah, so it would be nice if we could kind of collectively maybe come up with an, a, a plan for really great strategies for writing really great uh, uh, resolutions. That would be awesome. All right. Well, thank you all so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Uh, been an hour of our time. I think it was very well spent. I'm very happy to have to see all of you here. Um, and uh, there'll be another one coming up in April. I was thinking about having these every other month. You can also let me know if you think that's often enough. Um, I also didn't want to use up a lot of your time. We seem to have a lot of National Grange Zooms going on. So I just wanted to kind of slip in here where I could. Uh, but otherwise, um, if there's no more questions or comments, I'll uh, say goodnight. You are free to leave.